Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. All that stuff I always say. I do appreciate it, so thank you very much for that. And today I'm going to be talking about Topaz Remask. It's a uh, very powerful masking tool from our friends over at Topaz Labs. It's been out for a while. It's not new. It's just something that I've been re uh, using more recently. I did a recent video, which is right there, about how I took a photo from Venice that had kind of been bothering me for a long time because I'd been unable to edit it in a way that was satisfactory to me. And I replaced this guy quickly and easily in Remask, and then I went into Luminar and did a bunch of color work. And that video was basically about how Remask and Luminar, to me, come together and make an incredibly powerful pair, what I call a match made in heaven. And so, in that video, I talked about Topaz Remask, and I went through a quick demo of how I swapped out the sky. Um, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it, so I thought I'd go back in and do more of a getting started with Topaz Remask kind of video. So, not a full tutorial, but a bit more comprehensive video about how it works, because honestly, it's super freaking incredibly awesome and powerful. I've been using it a lot. I love to swap out skies and just create art and do things. And uh, Remask is an incredibly, um, well, capable tool for doing that. So let's just jump into the photo. Okay, so here's a photo from Prague on the uh, Charles Bridge at sunrise. Beautiful spot. In, in fact, the sky actually was not that bad. Um, the sky was actually fine. Uh, and in fact, I've edited this photo before and put it on my Flickr account. Um, and, you know, with Luminar, all the power of the filters and the color adjustments, I was able to make it look great. But um, I wanted to use this as an example because if you look at the skyline, it's very complicated. You get all these little steeples or spires, I guess is a better word, um, sticking up and all that kind of stuff. And so I was able to mask that uh, into this in Topaz Remask. Same foreground, untouched, unedited uh, foreground. So, um, you know, that needs some work, but this guy is completely replaced, and I'll show you how I do that um, in this video. I then took it into Luminar and did a bunch of color work and made this kind of fantastical, dreamy, really dramatic photo. I'm not going to jump into that Luminar workflow because that'll make the video way too long. So I'm just going to jump into Remask and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Now, to be clear, Topaz Remask is on version 5. And uh, the great thing about Topaz is once you buy one of their products, you own it forever. Uh, it's not a subscription, but also what I mean is even if they come out with a new version, they're going to give you an upgrade at no charge for the life of the product. So I think that's incredible. So you could buy Topaz Remask 5 right now. And even if they come out next week with version 6, you get a free upgrade. The reason I bring that up is because this product has been out for a while. It's not new. Um, I've had it for a long time. And I've played with it a little bit um, over the years, but I've never really spent a lot of time on it until recently. And then um, I just realized, I was like, God, I should have been using this for a lot longer than I have. Um, I'm not really a Photoshop person. I don't dispute the power of Photoshop. I've just never really liked it, to be honest. And I love things like this because I think Remask is super simple and easy to use. If you decide you want to get it, it's about $70 US dollars, which seems expensive. But when you see the power of it, I think you'll kind of say, wow, I mean, it's worth it in my opinion. You can also use my name, Jim Nix, as a coupon code to save 15%. I'll put a link down below that is an affiliate link if you choose to purchase. I make a small commission uh, and that helps support the, uh, the equipment and all those sort of things that I put out here in order to create these free training videos for you, my friends. Okay, so let's hop into it. So there's a couple of things to know. Um, when you put a photo in a remask, the first thing it does is defaults to green. And there's basically three colors that come into play here for them. Uh, green, which is what you want to keep. So currently it's saying, hey, keep the whole photo. We're going to change that. Um, red, which is this is the stuff I want to get rid of. And then blue, which is what you do is you draw a blue line along the, the uh, where you want to cut out the sections. And blue is basically what they call the compute brush um, or the compute line. And that's where you're telling Topaz, hey, guess what? That's a little too complicated for me to mess around with. I don't want to futz around with that. Forget about it. You do it yourself. You figure it out. And so that's really what compute is. And so if you come over here, there's a few different tabs, right? So you get the original, uh, which you can click on here. There's your original photo. Here's your tri map. That's the tab it defaults to. They call it tri map because of the three colors I mentioned, green, red, and blue. Um, over here, you can see your mask, which is currently uh, you know, white, everything. There's your keep and there's your cut, right? Again, we haven't done anything. So I'm going to go back to the try map tab. By the way, you can also alter the view over here, getting a, a, a split view or a quad view. Not going to mess with that in this video. And by the way, this is more of a getting started video with, you know, tutorial elements to it. 
I'm not gonna cover every aspect in depth because there's a lot. And in fact, there's a component of this I wanna point out that I really don't use. Um, and thus I'm not gonna include it in the video. And that's over here in this brushes. There's a primary brush, there's color range brush, and there's transparency brushes. Transparency brush is incredibly good if you have like a transparent object um, and you're trying to mask out the background behind it that's kind of see-through, but not entirely. Hard to do, easy to do in Remask, right? And um, there's a great video that they have on their YouTube channel under Topaz Labs where you can see that being demonstrated. I won't demonstrate that here, but as an example, if you're a wedding photographer and you have a picture of the bride and the groom and the bride's veil is flowing and you wanna swap out the background, but you also wanna get the background from behind the veil, that's what the transparency brush is for. Not my bag, I don't do that kind of stuff, so I've yet to really come across a situation where I need it. However, I will cover the primary and the color range brushes. So let's hop in. The first thing you do is you have the brush category here and then you have the fill category. I'm gonna start with the brush and I'm gonna start on blue. And if you notice, I got a mouse here uh, and it's kind of blue. So all you do, as I said, this is, uh, this is the compute or the uh, Hey Topaz, you figured outline. Um, and so all I'm doing is coming over here and I'm saying, hey, I want you to figure out um, what's going on with the mask around these edges because it's too much work for me. I, I kind of don't want to do it, you know, Mr. Topaz or Mrs. Topaz, help me out. So I've drawn the line and usually what you do is you just come down here to fill. I'm going to click on red and one click there turns the sky red. And all I've now told Topaz is, hey, the sky's red means I don't want it. The foreground's green, which means I do want it. And the blue line stuff is where I'm, I want you to figure out what the mask looks like because it's too complicated. So the typical or simple approach next would be to hit compute mask and it'll figure it out pretty well, right? I, I made a wide cut there and at these edges, you can see where it's kind of foggy. That means the mask is not that clean. So you can come over here and you can increase or decrease edge hardness, uh, which may help and also mask strength, right? Um, that may help as well. But the truth is, um, it's not clean. There is a way to clean it up and that's what I wanna show you now. Um, you could theoretically come back and try to clean the mask up like that, but I prefer to do it right the first time. And so it reminds me of something my dad said when I was a kid and I was trying to shortcut a chore or something. And he would say, hey son, if you don't have the time to do it right the first time, when are you gonna find the time to do it again? Totally fair point. And I feel the same thing about this masking. The work that you put in in advance is gonna pay off in a much cleaner mask uh, with, with little to no cleanup later. So. Let's go back in and let's draw this blue line and let me show you how to use the color range uh, brushes to uh, create a much cleaner mask. And so I'm gonna once again kind of draw this line here and you know again overlapping a bit that's okay we're about to go clean that up and I'm now just talking to fill up the time while I drag my mouse over this uh, stuff. There we go I'm gonna hit red fill I'm gonna click on the sky once again, I'm back to where I was. Now I need a sip of tea. Ah, so good, love my tea. English breakfast. Um, okay, so now we're going to color range. So I'm gonna click on that tab. Color range is where you do the refinement of your mask. So this is where I'm gonna be able to take the green and say, I really want that stuff to be green, or the red and say, I really want that stuff to be red, whatever it is. And so. You can, you can just compute as I, as I did and get an okay mask. Sometimes it'll do an incredibly good job just hitting compute mask at this point, sometimes not as much. This is a situation where as you saw, it was kind of like, well, I'm not so sure, Jim. Um, we're gonna go make it sure. So you basically have a green, what they call foreground brush, and you see the A there, that's the hot key. So you can hit the A to activate that, or the S will activate the background brush. So I'm gonna start with background, I'm gonna hit S, and then all you do, it turns into a dropper and you see the dropper's red and I'm just gonna click there and then start painting. And all I've done is um, highlighted that color and said, hey, Topaz, I want anything that uh, is uh, the same. You see, it's not getting on that. Um, all I'm doing is saying, hey, Topaz, anything that's the same color as what I just clicked on, turn it red. That's why I can actually go over some of the stuff that's in green or blue and not worry about it uh, turning color. Just be careful what you select, right? So I'm gonna hit S again. I'm gonna click right there and see how that cleans that up and cleans that up. And I'm just getting an incredibly nice mask. Sometimes you go over it, it doesn't work. Hit S again, put the dropper in the middle of it and bam, it's just beautiful. I mean, look at that mask. 
I'm even going over the edges as you can see and I'm getting a really nice mask here. Uh, one more time, S, drop it right there, cleaning that up, cleaning this up. Okay, I'm gonna hit S, I'm gonna drop it right there. And you see, it can figure out the colors based on what I'm doing. And I've got a really clean um, section that's in red. Ooh, I missed a spot. Uh, here we go, right there, so tiny. Okay, so there's that, another sip of tea, sorry. Okay, now I'm gonna go to A, and I've now changed to the green brush. You can see my dropper is green. Now I'm gonna come over here to the roof, and I'm gonna hit uh, right in the middle of the roof, and I'm just gonna say, paint that green. I'm gonna hit A again, and these colors vary quite a bit. And so this is where um, it does take a little bit of time. So I just keep hitting A, and I keep going over these things, and it again, it just requires some work. So I'm gonna, uh, at this point, just finish this up and then I'll, uh, I'll fast forward the video so you don't have to watch. Okay friends, I think I've got a pretty clean mask now. Um, may not be perfect, but I spent a few minutes on it and I think it looks really good. So this is the point where I would say compute mask and now I click compute mask and look at that. Do you recall, maybe I should have screenshotted that. Do you remember how it was kind of fuzzy around a lot of the edges, especially in some of these crevices? And now look at the mask. I mean, it's just incredible. So um, again, you can you can increase or decrease mask strength and uh, you know uh, things like edge hardness and all that. And I, I have a beautiful mask, to be honest. So this is where you can come in and say, here's what I want to do. I want to put in a new sky. So this is where I'm going to use image. Now you can also just you know create a solid color background or something. That might be great if you're doing product photography and you just want like a white background or whatever, you know. So, but I'm gonna do image because of what I shoot, it's gonna always be a sky replacement. So I'll just do that. It'll open up a big mess of stuff on my desktop and I'll go over here to my textures file and go into clouds and skies and I gotta pick something that's pretty. Let's see here. That's pretty. Um, um, yeah, I like that one. So. Here we go, I'll say open, and it drops the sky on top of it. Now you're gonna notice, hey Jim, it doesn't fit. And that's because the photo from Prague was shot with a my Sony camera, which is a three to two aspect ratio. This sky was shot a number of years ago with my Olympus camera, which is a four to three aspect ratio, because it's micro four thirds. So all you can do is just expand that, and you can see you'll end up covering the stuff on the sides. And now you can also just move this up and I wanna get more of that orange in there, which is kind of what I liked about the photo. And you do something, you know, just get it wherever you want. Uh, maybe a, something like that seems pretty good. And you can see you can move that around in the background and it covers it incredibly well. And then you're done, my friends. You can just hit save as, and I'll just save it to my desktop and, you know, pick all these things, whatever, and I'll say, okay. Now let me go show you the, uh, the finished photo. Okay, so here's the finished masked photo. Um, and as you can see, I mean, if you look, I think I did a pretty good job. Yeah, if you look around these uh, steeples, spires, whatever they're called, I mean, look at the masking. There's no there's no indicate. oh, I missed a spot right there. Well, that's bad me, that's not Topaz. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you look at that, I mean, even these tiny little things, they stayed and the sky slipped in behind them just perfectly. So, um, I mean, that that's incredible. I think it's mind blowing, it's just, it's simple and it only took a few minutes. Now I fast forwarded the video, but honestly, if I wasn't talking, I'd probably spend seven or eight minutes doing something like that with even the color range masking, um, which I think is an incredibly powerful component of Topaz Remask. And that's it, my friends. I just wanted to walk through that. Um, I'm not gonna share the Luminar component. I showed you what that photo looked like. Here it is again. Um, but um, yeah, it's... Uh, that's Topaz Remask. Check it out at the link down below if you're interested. Check out the Topaz Labs uh, YouTube channel if you want more videos, especially how to use the transparent brush. If you're uh, doing like weddings or you have like hair and uh, things like that, it, it does a great job. Incredibly powerful. I'm so happy to be using it. And I hope this video was helpful. So thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Take care and adios.